Good evening, and welcome to the final fall edition of Good Taste Gwinnett, powered by Jackson EMC. I'm Anthony Rodriguez, co-founder and producing artistic director of Aurora Theater in Lawrenceville, Georgia, and I'm excited to partner with the Gwinnett Daily Post and Publix Aprons Cooking School to present to you even more delicious recipes and cooking demonstrations from many of the great restaurants and food establishments in and around Gwinnett County. Thank you for joining us for this fall virtual event. It's been fun to meet the owners and chefs of some of the best dining establishments right in our own backyard and to cook along with their chefs. Before we start tonight, I was asked to remind you to mark your calendars for November 6th, Gwinnett Health Fair at Bogan Park in Buford. This free health event will feature health screenings, free COVID vaccines, and over 40 exhibitors. Visit GwinnettHealthFairs.com today for more information. As you watch tonight, know that you may also view this event in its entirety or watch parts of particular interest to you starting tomorrow on GwinnettDailyPost.com and for the next few months on GoodTasteGwinnett.com. You can also watch previous week's episodes in case you want to brush up on some of the great ideas shared with you over the past week. We will be giving away prizes during our presentation tonight, so watch to see if your name is posted at the end of the show. If you win, you will be notified via email after tonight's event. Before we start cooking, I wanna once again introduce our partner that is making this all possible. April Sorrow, Vice President of Communications at Jackson EMC. Thanks, Anthony. I'm April Sorrow with Jackson EMC, and we're thrilled to be back for week two of the series. And I can't wait to see what the chefs have in store for us tonight. So we've been a partner with the Gwinnett Daily Post um, in this event for the last 16 years. And it's something that really means a lot to us at Jackson EMC because teaching people how to use electricity in their kitchens is something that is really dates back to the beginning of when we brought electricity to this area back in the 1930s. So back then, people didn't know how to cook with electricity. So we actually had people um, that worked at Jackson EMC who went out into the community and they did cooking demonstrations and taught people how to cook with electric ovens for the first time and how to use electric appliances really uh, as a basic understanding of how to use electricity. So it's exciting for us to continue that rich heritage today uh, with events like this that are back out in the community celebrating this wonderful tradition that we have with the delicious food and these wonderful restaurants that we have in our community today. When you registered for the event, you became eligible to win lots of great prizes, including this beautiful Breville oven, which we will draw for in week two of this event. Jackson EMC is thrilled to sponsor the grand prize every year, and we are so excited to give away this beautiful Breville oven. Thank you, April. And thanks again to Jackson EMC for powering tonight's culinary event. I wanna take a minute to also thank Publix for being the official grocer and Belk Mall of Georgia, the official retailer for Good Taste Gwinnett. I also wanna thank our supporting sponsors, including Fernbank Museum of Natural History, Gwinnett County, the City of Lawrenceville, Chick-fil-A Backstage Tour, Gwinnett Solid Waste presenting America Recycles Day on November 6th, Gas South District, the Gwinnett Daily Post, and of course, my own Aurora Theater. And also, special thanks to our friends at Love and Floors for these beautiful arrangements. They're located right here on the square in Lawrenceville and are also opening their second location in late October in Brazelton. If you purchased a VIP ticket package, you received a $10 certificate to Love and Florist. We're starting our journey tonight here at Aurora Theater, home of the new Lawrenceville Arts Center. Tonight, it's my pleasure to accompany you as we visit Uncle Jack's Meat House, Publix Aprons Cooking School, Marlowe's Tavern, Sugar Hill Distillery, and Local Republic. I hope you join us tonight to cook along with these amazing chefs using recipes posted on GoodTasteGwinnett.com. Before we begin, please watch these brief messages from our sponsors. All right. Mom, Dad, I'm a pescatarian now. Okay. So pescatarian. Dude, come on. Get the groceries you need when you need them. Curbside pickup at Publix, powered by Instacart. How'd it go? Spaceman said there'd be ice cream. Oh. Forgot your toothbrush. 
Ice cream. Got it. That was a spaceman, space baby. Woo! Get the groceries you need when you need them. Publix delivered. Powered by Instacart. At Jackson EMC, innovation is an ongoing cycle. A process without a beginning or an end. Where one idea leads to the next. Solar power. Electric vehicle programs. Energy efficient right choice homes. Automated switch technology. What we do as an industry is vital. We keep communities powered. So we must always have an eye on the future. Jackson EMC. Innovation for today. Innovation for tomorrow. We are here today at Uncle Jack's Meat House in Peachtree Corners with my dear friend, Chef Dylan. I'm Anthony Rodriguez, your host. We're going to cook up some incredible dishes that are going to be on the menu of Uncle Jack's Tavern that's going to open in about, well, sometime late October, early November 2021 in downtown Lawrenceville. Chef Dylan, what are we going to do today? And I'm excited because I think I get to help a little bit. So thank you for having me again. Um, it's always a pleasure to cook with you and work with you. Um, so today we're going to be doing a couple dishes from our new Jack's Tavern menu, as you said. Um, these are tavern food reinvented into the Uncle Jack's way. Just okay, cool so there's going to be a little bit of a twist on some fun things oh, that yeah. we're That's all we're going to is twists, for Great. sure. Um, so today, the first thing we'll do is make a, our version of a Caesar salad for a tavern. So they're called Tavern Caesar Tacos. Uh, so it's a Parmesan twill as the shell, and then uh, homemade Caesar dressing, uh, Reggiano Parmesan on top, and then crouton crumble. Now, don't get freaked out by the word Parmesan twill. Chef Dylan assures me that they're not that hard to make. We can do this. Right. So first thing we're going to do, we have our sheet tray and our silk pat. So it's a non-baking pat. Um, and then I'll have you help me with this. Um, so all you do is you just microplane, which is just really finely great. Um, Reggiano Parmesan is what we use. Um, you can use kind of, you know, Grana Padano or anything you find, but just real Parmesan. Right, you don't want to use that stuff in the green can, oh. right? I'm not that. That I, is not going to work for this. It, I don't think it would work, no. Okay. Uh, I think it's got too much, like, you know, wax and all kinds of things in it. But real Parmesan <laughs> will do the trick. So um, what we're going to do is we're going to take our nonstick silk pack okay. and we're just going to make a six inch in uh, circumference uh, circle. And this is going to be just like a tortilla. This is going to be our taco shell. Just about that layer, and you're going to spread it out a little, and then with your hands. And so just like that, that's right. going to be our six Just inch. sort of a tortilla shape. Oh, absolutely. Great. And then how long do you bake this? Uh, this goes in the oven at 350 for about nine minutes until okay. it's a crispy golden brown. Yes, sir. So All that right. just goes right in. And in the meantime, you can get everything working. So just like that, close it, easy as can be. Perfect. So we make our own dressing. It's just the classic dressing that we have. Um, our recipe is kind of unique. Uh, we use the anchovy egg yolk, you know, fresh cracked black pepper. Absolutely, I'm a big fan of anchovy. Please don't be scared. It just adds a salty brininess to it. It's not super crazy fishy. Yes. And then, um, so we have our romaine lettuce and then we're just gonna chop this up if you'd like to do that. Sure. And you just want a rough chop? Yes, please. Just all of it? And including we, the ends? Uh, no, none of the stalks or the ends. You only want the leafy green parts. Okay. And then we're going to chop that. Um, and then we have our Caesar dressing. Uh, we have a recipe online of how we make the Caesar. Um, and you just add all the ingredients together and blend it up. We're going to do about three ounces of the Caesar dressing. And then we're going to uh, just mix all that up. Okay. As far as the romaine, um, before service, when we you know start selling, uh, we shock it in ice um, to give it this extra crisp to it. And uh, you know before we uh, um, rinse it and dry it as well. So you know it's clean, but it also has this crisp where you bite into it and it just. Explodes. So how long do you put it in ice water? About like five to ten minutes. Okay. Uh, now we just wait for our Parmesan twills to okay. come out of the oven. I have an example. I will show you. Perfect. Oven. We have these little stands. So we have our perfect Parmesan taco. And then that's what our Caesar salad will go into. 
Um, very simple dish, but just something so cool for dinner parties or anything like that. So you're just going to layer the, the romaine in there? You can, uh, with our tavern menu, you can order shrimp or chicken or beef or anything you want to add on top of it. Oh, really? So it's going to be just like a taco station, but it's just that cool thing where you can pick up your Caesar and eat it with your hands. Oh, that's fantastic. I love everything about this. And friends, you know, it's football season right now. This is something you can make at home. It's very different for, uh, for, your, for your football party on the weekend. We take it out of the oven. Um, just be careful, it's going to be very hot. And so we have our Parmesan twills. And so it's really just baked Parmesan. Here at the restaurant, we use um, these little taco inserts. But as Anthony and I were talking about, you can really use your hands once it cools a little bit and all that. Um, or you can use a you know, little pan or a bowl, anything you have at home. So Anthony, what we're going to do is we're just going to pick it up with our Fitch spatula. And we're going to drape it over this uh, taco holder. Oh, that's pretty simple. And, we only have and then just very gently, because it hardens very quickly. And it is a little form. hot, friends, so be careful. And you just form your perfect taco. And within about 30 seconds, it's going to harden into a perfect taco shell. Look at that. We got Parmesan taco <laughs> shells. So how are we going to plate this? So here at the meat house and as well as the tavern, uh, we make all of our own plates. Uh, so Willie Deagle, our owner, is a genius and he has a factory in New York. And so everything is made. So we didn't want to be constrained to, you know, plate manufacturers ideas. So we just make our own plates. Um, so anything you find like a wooden board or anything like that, just to carry on with that, uh, you can use. So we're going to use our little taco holder, our two taco holder. And we're going to place our Caesar salad taco shells right. right in the middle. And then, Anthony, if you want to just fill them up with uh, Caesar. And so then we just have our extra Parmesan cheese. We're just going to sprinkle a little on top so it starts to look like a taco. This is fun. And then um, we make our own croutons in-house. So it's just focaccia, and you brush it with uh, garlic butter, and uh, we do fiener, which is tarragon, chive, chervil, and parsley. And uh, a little bit of lemon zest and all that. But, uh, you know, even just butter and garlic is fine. Uh, and then we top these with Parmesan as well. And so with these, we just kind of roughly chop it. So you just want a little bit of a crumble, nothing, yes. nothing major. Right? Oh, nothing major. And you can use, like, five-day-old bread and anything that's about to go off and, you know, just saute it with brown butter and all, and it'll form. And then you're just going to put your kind of meat on top, your crouton, so it kind of looks like a taco, and it's starting to come. And if you have some protein that you're adding to this, you might want to back up a little bit on the, on the, on the romaine, or no? Oh, uh, yes. Yeah. yes. Yeah. Just a little. Yeah. Um, and then you can kind of, you could even do the protein on the bottom, just like a real taco, and then do your lettuce on top, and then your cheese, and so it'd be a fantastic kind of idea, and you can get creative and play with it however you want. Well, Chef Dylan, these look absolutely fantastic. And uh, as y'all can see, it wasn't, it wasn't super difficult to make. You can make these at home. The Parmesan, as long as you've got a sill pad or something so it does not stick to your pan, you're going to be set to make these. Chef Dylan, thank you thank so you, much. When we see you next time, we'll be cooking and I'll be tasting. We are here today at Uncle Jack's Meat House in Peachtree Corners with my good friend, Chef Dylan. And we are about to try these amazing Caesar salad tacos with a Parmesan cheese twill taco shell. Chef, talk to me a little bit about the Uncle Jack's experience, the new restaurant in Lawrenceville, anything to keep their mind off watching me eat. So uh, Lawrenceville will be our fourth restaurant here in Georgia. Um, we came down here about four years ago. Willie Deagle brought his company and, you know, we just pride ourselves on a great guest experience. Um, we pride ourselves on the best ingredients, the best, and then the coolest presentations as well. The number one focus is the taste and the food. Well, and, you hit a home run. Yeah. This is incredible. I mean, it's ridiculously incredible. I mean, that taco shell, that Parmesan taco shell, the saltiness of that, Parmesan Reggiano is just so good. And then the unctuousness of the, uh, of the salad dressing. Again, I'd dress it with a, a few more anchovies. That's me, I love them so much. And then those crunchy croutons on top. 
and it'd be great with shrimp on it or anything. Yeah. The taste is fantastic. You are always so on point with your food here at Uncle Jack's Meat House. And I mean, the thing that I love so much is you just feel super welcome, right? When you walk into any Uncle Jack's Meat House, it just, you, they, make it, they make you feel like family from the minute you walk in the door. Absolutely. And that, that's a great that you feel that way because we try so hard, you know, every single guest, every time to try and make them have the best experience they can and, you know, just keep coming back to our house, to our family, Uncle Jack's Meat House, you know? Well, thank you. Chef, I, I, I'm going to finish this. So I'm going to finish it off camera. Friends, I'm Anthony Rodriguez, your host. Again, we're here at Uncle Jack's Meat House in Peachtree Corners with Chef Dylan. Stop in sometime here or the new one they're opening, Uncle Jack's Tavern in Lawrenceville. Ask and see if Chef Dylan's around. I promise you, he's around. He'll come out to your table and say hello and talk to you. He's great people. It's been my pleasure being your host today. I'm going to finish up this amazing Caesar salad taco. And join us again next time on the 2021 edition of Good Taste Gwinnett, powered by Jackson EMC and sponsored by our good friends at Publix Aprons Cooking School. Thanks so much, Chef Dylan, and thanks for letting me cook along with you. In addition to Uncle Jack's Mead House locations in Duluth and Peachtree Corners, we're excited for the opening of Uncle Jack's Tavern right here in Lawrenceville at South Lawn and just a few steps from Aurora Theater. Just like these amazing restaurants that we're sharing with you tonight, Aurora Theater is an integral part of the Gwinnett community. We are on the verge of opening the new Lawrenceville Arts Center, which will be home to the Aurora Theater. But it's going to be so much more than that. It is going to be an amazing place for our community to be welcomed and to gather together. There'll be concerts, there'll be dance, there'll be amazing musicals, plays, comedy from, from the Aurora Theater that you've come to know and love. So please go to our website, auroratheater.com and check out all of those offerings. We're gonna open our first show in November, right after Thanksgiving, the day after Thanksgiving with our 26th annual presentation of Christmas Canteen. It's our Christmas card to Gwinnett and we wanna welcome each and every one of you back to the theater. So please join us for that. It'll run until just before Christmas. So bring your friends, bring your family, everyone that's coming into town to visit. We can't wait to see you at the new Lawrenceville Arts Center and Aurora Theater's production of Christmas Canteen. Next, we will be hearing from Publix, our official grocery sponsor, and Chef LB from Publix Aprons Cooking School. Before we head over to their kitchen, please watch these brief messages from our sponsors. So, we're hitting the road with a new culinary variety show, Alton Brown Live Beyond the Eats. What's it about? Well, it's definitely about food. It's about comedy. <laughs> I hope. There's music, maybe a puppet or two. The word I think is shenanigans. Yeah, culinary shenanigans. Alton Brown Live Beyond the Eats, coming to a town near you. Friends, welcome to another episode of the 2021 digital version of Good Taste Gwinnett, powered by Jackson EMC and sponsored by our friends at Publix Aprons Cooking School. I'm Anthony Rodriguez, your host, and I am here with Chef LB, who runs the Publix Apron Cooking School, and he is a rock star chef. Uh, LB, tell me, what are we making today? So today we're taking a bunch of ingredients that you might find in a traditional like Thanksgiving stuffing or holiday stuffing, and we're going to make a taco with it. I've got my sleeves rolled up. I've got this apron on, Publix Aprons Cooking School apron, and I'm gonna be doing the cooking. So we'll see how it goes. Hopefully I'll get some things right. Where do we begin? So we're gonna start by roasting our vegetables off um, and our mushrooms. So we have butternut squash and portobello mushrooms. They both come already cut up. It comes in a nice little 12 ounce container comes diced like this, kind of a perfect bite size. And then the portobello mushrooms, nice and sliced, so you don't have to really worry about that either. So, 
So we're going to start with this. We're going to start by roasting these off. Um, this is a nice dish where you don't get a lot of things dirty and okay. everything for the most part is in the oven minus our gravy. And I notice our roasting pans aren't out here ready for me. No. Us. So I am preheating our roasting pans. Um, Whenever you stick a pan into the oven with the vegetables on it, that pan has to now heat up. So you are in essence steaming the bottom of whatever you have in that roasting pan. This causes or allows us to start cooking immediately once we put our vegetables in the oven. So you get a nice sear on the bottom and on the top. So you're already preheating the oven, right? You're preheating it to 425. Might as well go ahead and put the pans in the oven and then you're ready to cook. And oh, absolutely. Here we go. Right? And, and if you have cast irons at home, those are already in the oven. Just use the cast irons to do the roasting part. So Fantastic. Nice and easy. All right. All right. So, so we've got grapeseed oil. Grapeseed oil. And we'll split it between both of them. A little bit here. And then some on those. Okay. And then we can go with a little bit of salt and pepper on both. All right. And you are using Himalayan sea salt? We are. So natural, we know where it comes from. Okay. And, and that is... So just a kind of a pinch a or? A good pinch, yeah, because we're also going to add some cotija cheese to these a little bit later, and that is nice briny and salty cheese, so we don't want to go too heavy. And then just a little bit of pepper. It's got a little kick. It's also nice and nutty from the uh, the, the husk of that pepper. So and we're going to mix these up. Give them a nice little so toss. So they've all got some seasoning and some oil on them. Right. And we'll do the same with these the mushroom. become a little trickier. They do, and we... So it might be better to use a larger bowl at home. You don't want to break the mushrooms up. These are going to be the meaty part of our All taco. Right, I'm trying to be careful here. <laughs> so I will grab the pans out of the oven and I will have you add them to them. And you'll probably be able to hear the sizzling as we add it. So go mushrooms. And you want to try and get these all on one level? Possibly, yeah. So without burning the, oneself? If you can. Right. We'll stick those in the oven. If you can't, you will burn yourself. And if you can't, then yeah. Then, <laughs> then we have a real cool story the next time that we, we do oh, this. Oh yeah, you can hear the sizzle, especially on so, butternut squash. It's already sauteing as we stick it back in the oven. So okay. now we'll make a little bit of a topping. So if this is going to be called a stuffing style taco, there's got to be some sort of stuffing in it. Okay, exactly. So we've got... This one is actually just your country style stuffing. This is a bag stuffing that you can get in any Publix. Um, another great one would be, I know that there is a uh, potato roll dumpling that will be coming short, or sorry, potato roll stuffing that'll be coming out shortly. Um, if you have some extra bread, just use that. But you want it about, you want to buy one that's this consistency, not the big chunky kind of bag stuff. Not the stuff that looks like a crouton, something okay. that's going to be a little bit more broken up. If, if you have the ones that are like croutons, just smash it up in a little bit. Because after all, we're making tacos, so we don't want them to be super bulky. Exactly. We don't want to bite into something that's going to break our teeth. Okay. So add to that the cotija cheese. So all of it? All of it. Yes, I love cheese. I love cotija cheese. It is a briny cheese. Um, it is a Mexican style cheese. If you can't find this. It's kind of dry, right? It's not it's quite dry. like a Parmesan, but it's. It's kind of like a dry feta. Okay. Uh, if, if you're going to try to, and feta would be a really good alternative if you can't find a cotija. And to this one, we're actually going to add extra virgin olive oil. So. This is really only getting toasted at the end. This is like a breadcrumb topping for this taco. So how much of this? Until it looks good. <laughs> yeah, so we'll, we'll actually use quite a bit. So um, we're, we're trying to get this wet, um, this, this stuffing mixture. And we'll just hold that off to the side. And after about 15, 16 minutes of the vegetables roasting, that goes in for the last three minutes. On the vegetables? It goes right on top of the veggies. So okay. the cheese melts. So you'll divide this up a little bit on the mushrooms, a little bit on the butternut squash. Scrape it off and then you're good to go. And while we're doing that, we have... So while we're waiting, we will start making our gravy. So not your super traditional gravy that you would find on your turkey. This is something <laughs> that you can make with leftovers, but we're going to make a very basic gravy to start off with. So um, to do that, we're going to make a roux. So I have some butter for you. Okay, butter. And are we already heated up? Pan is heated up so we can add the butter to the pan. And then once that butter starts to completely melt, I also have some flour. So we are making a roux. A roux is going to thicken this sauce for us, our gravy. And now roux sort of, you know, they tend to have, they, they 
you, you, you look at them based on color, so. Yeah. So this one's going to be a blonde roux. This one, we're gonna know that it's ready to go. It's gonna smell like a, a shortbread cookie. Um, the darker the roux get, the more flavor you get. Um, also the less thickening power you're gonna have. So those like really dark roux that you find in a lot of the Creole and Cajun cuisines, those are not going to have a lot of thickening power, but they taste really, really, really good. I'm assuming this is why this little whisk is here? Yep, and we have the whisk that is pronged so that we can get into all those little edges. I love that. I'm gonna pick one of these up, and you all have a lot of these instruments right here, right? We do. So we, are, we, are, we have a bunch of exclusive items to our Publix because of the cooking school. So do we get a good smell of like almost like a shortbread cookie coming yet? I'll be able to go a couple of more couple seconds. Minutes. Um, and Tell me a little bit about the Publix Aprons Cooking Schools. What can people expect when they come? So at the cooking school, we have a couple styles of classes. Demonstration, so that would be someone's watching you and I, just like they are on this video. And then someone else will be passing around a glass of wine, or a, a portion of wine and some a, a course of food. Um, in those classes, you get four courses of food, five courses of wine. Wow. It's like dinner and a show. That's fantastic. Now, uh, I heard rumor, I heard tell, that you could do the Public Aprons Cooking School as like a private party. Yes, so if you are interested in getting a group of friends together and you just feel like either watching a cooking demonstration, hanging out with a couple of cooks, um, some instructors, or if you actually want to get your hands dirty, you get in contact with me at the cooking school. You get to choose a menu and we, 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 get, we get going from there. And uh, what's the best way to contact you? The uh, best way to contact me is uh, through email um, or through just calling the store and asking for me and then I have no problem talking to you over the phone. Um, All right. All right. So We're here at the Alpharetta store. Alpharetta in, uh, Commons location. Al so I think our roux right, is there. getting there. So we're gonna add this just slowly so we're not going to add it all at once or else we're going to get dumplings so we're going to add a about time. like a quarter of that mixture at a time and if it spills that's totally fine so we can probably start adding some more i didn't exactly choose the best pouring cup but no, it's fine aesthetically I mean, it looks good like and are we going to eventually use all of this um we're going to go until a consistency that we're looking for so Probably not all of it, depending on if you like a thicker or thinner gravy, because we will be adding a salsa verde to it. Here, I'll add the rest of the liquid if we need it. <laughs> You've already got some steam burns. It's my turn, right? That's fine. So we'll go a little bit more. And so as that thickens up, we'll reduce the heat once it gets to about that consistency that we're looking for. Yo, we're getting messy in the kitchen. We are. Does that happen? And when you come to a cooking class, you don't have to do any of the cleaning. <laughs> oh, that's great. Oh, yeah. you can. We have kids classes, and you can imagine how long that takes to clean up afterwards. Now, this that we're adding is just a, a, a pre-made salsa verde. This is the pre-made salsa verde. You would find this on your international section at your local Publix. So I would do about three, table, uh, three of these spoons to start off with. Okay. And then it's really to taste. Um, I like a lot of salsa verde on my tacos. Um, so I might add maybe two, three, four more of those scoops in there. But for the sake of your, your normal palate or just somebody who doesn't need to have the salsa verde just emanating throughout the entire dish, probably don't need to do that. So. Friends, I'm telling you, this looks like a really uh, great alternative gravy for folks for their Thanksgiving. You could use this on turkey and it would taste really great. From here, we're just gonna let our vegetables finish roasting. If you wanna grab that mixture, we will pull some of these veggies out. We'll pretend that it's been 15 or 16 minutes. And we'll uh, shovel some of this on here. Pulling that on there, so it'll get nice and crunchy with the rest of our veggies. And right. then do the same thing with the butternut squash. And something that you might notice is if you take that spoon and move the squash around, it's not sticking to the pan. What? So it's like magic, friends. All right, so that looks delicious. That'll go for another two, three, four minutes uh, until you get to the crunchiness and cheesy melted level that you want to get to. And then 
and we'll top our tacos with it. I can't wait to taste these tacos. I love tacos. These are going to be mushroom tacos and butternut squash tacos with this incredible salsa verde gravy that we've made, and I can't wait to taste those things. We'll see you in a minute, and we're going to taste those tacos. I'm Anthony Rodriguez. I am here at Publix in Alpharetta, Alpharetta Commons to be exact, at the Publix Apron Cooking School with my friend Chef LB. And we are gonna try these amazing tacos. We've got- We have all of our ingredients laid out. This is how I would do it at home. Um, we have the butternut squash, the mushroom soap. Essentially, uh, I, you can mix them together. This will be the nice meaty version. This is a nice little bit of a sweetness. And what a great way to just set this out, um, you know, on, on, on a big table or whatever. Your family can make the tacos however they want. You've heated up the tortillas. I'm going to dig into these amazing mushrooms. Mushrooms are one of my favorite foods. So we'll go with some butternut squash. This. this is very exciting. So just, maybe I should just use the entire plate of mushrooms. Our, uh, our little cheese and um, stuffing mixture is kind of turned into a crumble. It's nice and crunchy. It's going to add a nice little bite to our uh, tacos. And then I'll switch with you. Oh, thank you. And then oh, you're, you're going to mix them. Oh, I'm going crazy on this one. I, See, I, I wanted to taste each individually, but I, I mean, I like the way you think. I will start with my gravy. So I'm going to go gravy on both of them. Okay. Uh, I'm going to do a little, go ahead and do, I probably should finish with the cheese, but since you're working over on that side, I'll work over here. Look side. at that, friends. Look at that. We've made tacos. His might be prettier than mine. No, not necessarily. We both got messy plates. <laughs> <laughs> and that is the key to a good taco, messy plate. All right, we'll do the, the hunch. Mmm. That's fantastic. Those mushrooms awesome. are so delicious. That crumble in there. And of course, pickled onions just add a brightness to everything, right? Oh, absolutely. Um, so good. The combination is really, really tasty. And the salsa verde, it just brings everything together and gives it just this lusciousness that you wouldn't have if you were just using sal uh, mm -hmm. um, salsa verde, but the salsa verde gravy just gives it this depth of flavor and this unctuousness that you wouldn't, you wouldn't generally get if you're just pouring salsa on a taco. Chef LB, this has been incredible. I'm gonna finish these once we're off camera. Friends, I'm Anthony Rodriguez. It's always my pleasure to be your host for Good Taste Gwinnett, powered by Jackson EMC and sponsored by our friends at Publix Aprons Cooking School. We'll see you soon, and when we do, we'll be cooking. Thanks again, Chef LB, for letting me cook along with you. That was exciting, and I appreciate every moment I get to spend with you in the kitchen. I want to remind everyone that you can find many of these great cooking utensils, cooking devices, and serving dishes right up the street at our friends at Belk Mall of Georgia. I also want to remind you that from October 28th through the 31st, Belk Mall of Georgia will be hosting their fall charity days. For $5, you may purchase a charity ticket and right away receive $5 off your first purchase and 25% off any one item. The best part is that that ticket purchase money stays with a local charity and you get to enjoy a day of shopping the best deals of the year at Belk Mall of Georgia. It's even better than Black Friday. Also, don't forget to visit the Estee Lauder counter. When you purchase $45 in product, you can also purchase their fabulous holiday blockbuster for just $75. It includes $550 in product. Visit the Estee Lauder counter at Belk Mall of Georgia and ask for Shelly. Before we head back to Marlowe's Tavern, let's watch a couple of brief messages from our sponsors.
Friends, welcome to another episode of the 2021 digital version of Good Taste Gwinnett. I am here at Marlowe's Tavern in Duluth with bartender Tawny. And we are about to make, what are we going to make today, Tawny? The uh, Georgia Peachy Ginger Margarita. Well, I love a good margarita and a Georgia Peachy one sounds fantastic. So, well, walk us through this. So, we're first going to use our Herder Tequila. And you're using a, a reposado. Not that I know anything about tequilas, but I may know a little bit. Yeah, so not a blanco. We're going to be using a reposado. And why do you want to do that? Um, it brings out the taste, and it, uh, when you do a blanco, it's going to kind of mellow out more of the peach. You want to bring out your saltiness, the peach, and the ginger. So the reposado works very well with that. And two ounces? An uh, ounce and a half. Ounce and a half. Yes. Okay. Or if I'm making it at home, two ounces? Yes. Or three? Or Whatever. three if you want to make a double. And then we have next, this is the Barrow um, Intense Ginger. So that's where you're gonna get your ginger from. And how much of that? So this is gonna be half ounce, or at your house, an ounce. And then we're gonna do um, half ounce of our Herdera Agave Nectar, which goes with the Herdera Reposado Agave tequila. Syrup Nectar in there. And actually you can find this at Publix, I promise you. Maybe not this brand, but you can find agave syrup. I use it at home all the time instead of honey. Yeah, great for a new sweetener, not having something too sweet, and it's a little bit healthier for you. Right. And then you got your lime juice. So we don't Can't use... make a margarita without lime juice. Yeah, so there's not gonna be um, sour mix. It's going to be lime juice, and that's why we're using a little more of your um, agave nectar than you would. Okay. And then the peach, where you get your peach from in the Georgia Peach Margarita, you're gonna do two ounces. So that's one and a half, and that's a half, two ounces. You're gonna get or saline solution, so we're gonna do four drops of your saline solution, which is just pretty much salt water. So, uh, but not contact lens saline no, solution. No, 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 that would not be good. <laughs> you don't wanna do that. And then after we have that, we wanna shake this vigorously. I love this. I get to taste this soon, friends. And then, we want to get our strainer, have it over fresh ice. It looks refreshing and delicious, my favorite thing. And then you're going to have a lick of salt instead of the salted rim, and then you're going to have your candied ginger, and that's going to be your garnish. Oh, very nice. And then voila, drink and enjoy. Tawny, thank you so much. Uh, when we come back, friends, we're going to hang out with Tawny. We're going to learn a little bit more about Marlowe's Tavern, and we're going to taste this incredible Georgia peachy ginger margarita. When we come back, we'll be drinking. Friends, welcome back to Good Taste Gwinnett, powered by Jackson EMC and sponsored by our friends at Publix Aprons Cooking School. We are here at Marlowe's Tavern in Duluth. I'm your host, Anthony Rodriguez, and I'm here with the bartender at Marlowe's Tavern, Tawny, and she has just made me this Georgia peachy ginger margarita, and I am about to taste this delightful concoction. Tawny, tell us a little bit about the experience of Marlowe's Tavern, hanging out at the bar, being welcomed here as a friend. You go, I'll drink. All right, perfect. Well, what I love, it's kind of, we like to do the cheers feeling, so everybody knows your name, whether it's a server, bartender, you're always gonna see a familiar face, or you're always gonna see new people that come in from traveling to the hotel, or people that just live in the neighborhood. There's a lot of people that, even when they come in to travel, they're gonna come back here. You haven't seen them in a couple months, you see them right back in the seat the next time they're in town. So it's great seeing a familiar face in the neighborhood. It's also seeing familiar faces that have traveled just to come to see us. Well, this particular Marlowe's is almost right across the street from Gas South District and, and the arena. So you all get just just enormous amount of people that come through here. People that come into town for work, people that come into town for a show, all those sorts of things. So that welcoming atmosphere is super, super uh, important, right, when you come into Marlowe's. Yes. This is really tasty. This is fantastic. The peach comes through, the ginger comes through, gives you a little bite in the back of your throat. It's really fantastic. You know, I should have this with uh, with a Nashville hot grouper sandwich the next time I'm in here. That would be perfect. Cool down from you having your spiciness from the Nashville hot, then you won't have it so spicy. Friends, I'm not gonna torture you too much. I'm gonna finish this off camera. Thank you so much for joining us here at Marlowe's Tavern. I'm your host, Anthony Rodriguez. I've been hanging out here with bartender Tawny. We've been having a fantastic time. We'll see you again soon. And when we do, we'll be cooking or drinking. 
Thanks for that amazing drink, Tawny. I love when we feature drink recipes on this show. Be sure to visit Marlowe's Tavern in Duluth and try one soon. It's an incredible atmosphere over there at Marlowe's. And if you purchased a VIP package tonight, you received a free appetizer coupon from Marlowe's Tavern. If I were you, I would grab a ginger peachy margarita and one of their appetizers to start your dinner. Welcome back to the final edition of Good Taste Gwinnett powered by Jackson EMC. I want to once again thank Publix, the official grocer and Belk Mall of Georgia, the official retailer of Good Taste Gwinnett. And I want to thank you for joining us over the past two weeks as we present our third virtual event series of culinary creativity. As we cook and prepare food in the kitchen, many of us recycle. I wanted to take a minute and remind everyone that Saturday, November 6th, marks the return of America Recycles Day, ARD, a national initiative of Keep America Beautiful, first established by the National Recycling Coalition in 1997. ARD represents the only nationally recognized day dedicated to encouraging Americans to recycle and buy recycled products. This event is brought to you by Gwinnett County Solid Waste and Gwinnett Clean and Beautiful. You have the opportunity to drop off items that are typically more difficult to recycle, such as electronics, tires, and paint. Uh, paper shredding will also be available, as well as clothing and sneaker collection. So start gathering your items and bring them to Cool Ray Field, home of the Gwinnett Stripers in Lawrenceville, on Saturday, November 6th, between 9 a.m. and noon. Here's some things to remember before you come. Paper shredding is limited to five copier paper boxes. Electronics recycling is free, except for TV monitors and printers. Oil and latex paint will be accepted and limited to 10 gallons per vehicle. Latex paint cans must contain only 25% wet paint or less. Boxes and containers will not be returned. Check out GwinnettCB.org for more details. Now we head to Sugar Hill Distillery. Let's see what they have going on. But before we do that, let's check on some brief messages from our sponsors, including your very own Aurora Theater. At Jackson EMC, innovation is an ongoing cycle, a process without a beginning or an end, where one idea leads to the next. Solar power, electric vehicle programs, energy efficient right choice homes, automated switch technology. What we do as an industry is vital. We keep communities powered. So we must always have an eye on the future. Jackson EMC, innovation for today, innovation for tomorrow. We are here at Sugar Hill Distillery in the kitchen with Chef Morgan, chef of also Wonder Bar Beer House. And we are going to, well, what are we going to make? We're going to make pork schnitzel. Okay, well, we got to start with some pork, right? Yes, sir. So we've got this amazing pork right here. And Chef Dion, you're going to break it down for us? Sure am. All right, well, let's get to it. So talk to me about the pork. Is it, I mean, is it a specific kind? Is it Berkshire, blah, blah, you know? So this actually is a Duroc uh, variety of pork. It's also heritage hogs. Uh, they do, this comes from a primal pasture farm. Uh, we like to be as sustainable as possible here. And we like to tri trim it as uh, traditionally as possible while we're doing this. All right, so he's trimming it down. He's, he's cutting the fat off of it. Yes, sir. And then we're going to have, because we've got a, Pretty good, like, rectangle of, oh, yes, of pork sir. going on right there. You're going to have some very even pieces. Yes, sir. Yes. That, and that is key also with um, cooking this. Schnitzel, there's a saying in Germany, quick like a schnitzel. Everything must be uniformed, very, very thin, very, very quick process. All right. So how thin are you going to cut the pork schnitzels? Uh, we'll cut those about an, uh, about an eighth of an inch, and then we'll pound them with a mallet. Oh, okay. All right. Yes, sir. And then after you pound them with the mallet, I see you've got your breading station set yes, up sir. here. 
So a little flour, a little egg, a little breadcrumbs. A little yep. panko. Yes, sir. All right. I use panko. You can use any type of breadcrumbs. Um, I try to avoid the Italian seasoned breadcrumbs. Right. Because want... he's going to pound it so that you can actually see light that comes through it. So like, for Dion, it takes like three hits of the mallet. Yeah. How many times do you have to hit it? Uh, it's about the same. Uh, this this meat is so tender, and the marbling is so wonderful in it that it happens very very quickly. If you're hitting it too much or too lightly, it'll actually tense up the meat. Okay. And how often does the kitchen crew pretend they're Thor? Uh, very often. This hammer actually right here, this tenderizer is nicknamed Mjolnir. There you go. <laughs> there you go. I love it. So tell me a little bit about how you got to Sugar Hill Distillery. Was, uh, it was my day off. I was going around looking for old kitchen equipment at different antique shops. And I heard a woman across on the other aisle asking the uh, purveyor there about where she could find beer steins. I'd seen a bunch at different places, so I don't know why, but I decided to walk around and tell her where I'd found them. From there, it just kind of bloomed. So the owners of Sugar Hill Distillery uh, were looking for beer steins. Yes, sir. You helped them find beer steins, and I mean, I don't even know if they found beer steins, but apparently they found a chef for their restaurant. Yes, sir. That, yeah, that, they were that looking is some for... fateful meeting, my friend. Yeah, looking specifically for a Chef that cooks German food. Right, and you apparently uh, are a chef that cooks German food. <laughs> yes, sir, yeah. There's not many of them. <laughs> Talk so to me about your favorites, kind of uh, the variety of things that are here. Uh, well, everything here we make from scratch. Um, that is a very important thing, especially with a lot of the European customers that come in here. A lot of people in Gwinnett County and the surrounding areas, um, we have a large amount of German clientele. Hungarian clientele um, all over and we want to make a place where people are reminded of what they ate when they were younger. No, no other restaurants really do 100% from scratch uh, the way that we do here and you know you can really tell in the quality of the food. We make everything fresh every day. The schnitzels are made right before dinner service so that they're not Right, so they're not sitting around, yes, right? No, and they're not frozen. We actually have, we have one freezer in this place, and it's just for pretzels that we get shipped in from Germany. Okay. So the pretzels are actually shipped in from Germany. Yes, sir. I yeah. love that. So this is uh, this seems very simple. I mean, if oh, you yeah. if, you know you you've got to cut some pork very thin, and then you've got to pound it out. Um, you could probably get some boneless pork chops and oh yeah and yeah if you do it um yeah just make sure you cut the sinewy that little white piece that are, that's around the pork chop make sure you just kind of cut that off because that'll actually make it fold up okay. it'll tighten up real hard that's why we have cut off all of the chain meat all of the sinewy and all the fat and then what will you do with uh, with the remnants the remnants we will make that into our stock okay. Yeah, we or stock, which you will use in everything. Everything. Yes, sir. Yeah, it's a, we call it the everything stock. It has everything some beef, stock. some chicken, carrots, parsnips, onions. Whatever's left over. Everything. You make it stock. Yes, sir. Yeah, no, I always thought looking at all the cooks, I go, hey, that's our rays going down the trash. So. Right, and you don't want Dion Maddie. No. Under any circumstance. Of course not. Have you seen how big he is? Yes, I have. <laughs> in fact, I'm not in the shot anymore. <laughs> Awesome, guys. And now you're going to put together the sauce. So what are the ingredients we've got today? Uh, so right here we have cremini mushrooms. You can also use portobello mushrooms. I like to use creminis. They have a little bit more of a deeper flavor. Great. We have you're going to use them whole or you're going to chop them up? I'm going to slice them. Okay. Yes, sir. I like to do a little irregular. Some I'll slice, some I'll quarter, so that there is okay. no uniformity yeah, to it. Keeping true to that Swabian food. I have a little bit of minced garlic here. Some more uh, onions. You can use red onions, Vidalia onions, white onions if you like. It really Whatever doesn't onions. matter. Whatever floats yes, your boat. Right here is our house herb butter that we make. And, and that, so what herbs are in that butter? We have thyme, lavender, rosemary, and sage. It actually works kind of like a little bit of a uh, fumigator out there. It makes people calm and relaxed from the lavender. <laughs> and they, don't, they don't think they're waiting so long. So. Oh, great. Yep. And this is some of our everything stock that we make right here. Which seems super reduced. Oh, yes. Yes. This, this boils for about 20 hours. Wow. Okay. Well, let's put it together. So I use the biggest ones. I nice, like to chop them nice little slices, the smaller ones. I'll quarter those up. So we have nice little meatier part when we're eating our schnitzel. Now, you make the sauce first, then the schnitzels get pan fried. Uh, you can pan fry them. You can deep fry them. 
Do you all deep fry them? Uh, yeah, uh, yes, sir. Yeah, we deep fry them here. And is that red wine vinegar? Uh, this right here, this is actually burgundy wine. Okay, just yes. wine wine. Yes, sir. Okay. So we get the pan nice and hot. I like to add my butter to it with the herbs, get those activated. There. Always add in your onions first. They take the longest to cook, and you want to basically caramelize them very, very slowly. And also, garlic is a type of onion, so we'll put that in there as well. Wow, that smells fantastic. Oh, yeah. And you can smell that herb butter. You really can. Oh, yeah. That oh, lavender in there, it's I coming love, through. The mayor hit the city hall is right down there, and he walks by in the morning and goes, oh, chef, you're making me hungry. So what we're going to do here, see the onions are starting to get a little bit clear. I'm it's just trying to get sweating. calm here. Oh, yeah, right? Mm. Oh, it's wonderful. Garlic, those onions, they're all coming together. We want to reduce those down. I've done a lot of compound butters. That's not one of them. Yeah, this, it's very unique to the Black Forest region. That's what they use there. And their flavors are very, very distinct. And a lot of people that are from Europe, you know, they use lavender a lot more than we do here. Here we use it, you know, in soaps and shampoos and everything. So now I add my uh, mushrooms in there. No, it actually makes you hungry, right? It yeah. like, kind of makes you salivate. So it's I'm kind of baiting absolutely. the public to come in. Whenever they drive by on 20 over there, they kind of... Like popcorn movie theater, smell. your yeah. version, right? Yeah. My lavender herb butter. Everybody come into my yard. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. So right there, if you, if you notice, those mushrooms, they immediately soak up all that butter. Yeah. What's happening now is now... And all that flavor. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. It's going to penetrate through them completely and all the water in the mushroom is going to evaporate out very quickly. So at this point, you've cooked down the mushrooms. Yes, sir. They start to get this nice golden color, and that's from the butter caramelizing. Along with the onions, right there. So okay. what goes in next, wine or next, the stock? Next thing is gonna be the wine. We so want you're to gonna deglaze, deglaze the, the pan, pan with Yes, that sir. Water. Yes, sir. Right there. Nice. Some people, they like to do a little flambe, a little fire action going. Ah, you know, Dion likes to do the fire. It's good for the camera. Oh yes, it is, it is. Let's see if I can get one going here. Sometimes a pan's so hot, it just there automatically, you go. yeah, there you go. Not a it's big one, to go. but it's nice. Yeah, but that indicates right there that your alcohol is coming out. So how long are you gonna reduce that down? I'll a little bit? I'll just for a couple minutes. Um, you know, I want that flavors, all those flavors to marry together in there and penetrate those mushrooms. Those mushrooms are really going to be the highlight yeah, of it. Yeah, you know, you like to think of it, you think, oh, da da, I'm in the Alps, I'm in the German mountains, in the Black Forest, you know, while you're doing it. Try to put yourself into that. I, I personally like to think of every time I'm cooking, I'm cooking for my family. It has gotten darker in there. We actually have all these juices. I always give it a smell. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Turn my flame down a little bit right there, and then I'll add my stock. Now comes the stock, yes, the, the everything, everything stock. stock. Every single piece of everything goes into this. Pour that in real nice. So while we reduce that, well, well let's go ahead and fry some schnitzel. Yeah. All or right. is it too early to oh, fry Oh, no, 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 it's not too early. Yeah, we are, we're already boiling here, so our water's gonna be coming out of it very quickly. And these, you said quick like schnitzel, so how quick? Uh, they take roughly about a minute and a half to two and a half minutes, depending on how big they are. But really what you're doing is you're waiting just until this breading is golden brown. Okay. Yep. I do. You want to have, if you're doing a deep fryer, you want to have the basket in there already. Otherwise, they'll stick to the basket. Keep them spaced out. There we go. So you want to rotate them. You can do this with tongs, a fork. If you're pan frying Chopsticks, it. Chopsticks, whatever you got yeah, going anything. on, right? That's just, what I usually yeah. use in my fryer. Yep, you just want to flip them. But these are almost done already. Some people, they like to go ahead and put the gravy on it. What I like to do is put a little squeeze of lemon, and then I dip my pieces into the gravy. And those are finished. Fantastic. That quickly, yes. Yes, yes, yes. So I let them sit there and drip a little bit. We're going to plate this up in a little bit. When we come back, We'll be tasting this amazing food. We are here at Sugar Hill Distillery and Wonder Bar Beer House with Chef Morgan. Chef, we've got, we got some shiny equipment back here. You talk to me about that. Yeah, so this is where we make all of our beer and our spirits and bottle everything. Uh, 
This right here, this is some scientific equipment. But it's chemistry at a very yes, high it level. It is. It is extreme precision. But talk to me about what we've got here. I, I can't wait to try all of that too, but that's not this yeah. segment. So let's talk about what's in front of us. So right here we have pork schnitzels, and they're made from uh, Duroc pork that we get, and it is um, everything is made in-house from scratch breaded, fried. This is our mushroom gravy right All here. Right. Well, I'm, I'm ready. You I'm indignant, Talk to me right? a little bit about the atmosphere here at Sugar Hill Distillery, Wonder Bar Beer House, and what folks can expect that are coming to dine here or drink here. Oh, yeah. so Either way. When people come in here, I mean, you're always going to be met with a really nice uh, attitude. The environment here is just extremely friendly. It is still very much a community center. Um, most people in the community come here. A lot of the city officials, they come in here for lunch all the time. Mayor Steve is in here quite often, uh, always bragging about us over here. And, you just uh, keep talking. This oh, is yeah. amazing. <laughs> incredibly yes. crispy, incredibly light. Having oh, yes. just that lemon on it, oh, that's yeah. fantastic because you taste everything. The flavor of the pork comes through, the flavor oh, yeah. of everything is just perfect. Oh, now, yeah. I'm a huge mushroom fan, so I can't wait to do it that way as well. Um, yeah, just pile it on there, man. Just pile it on there. So it's good stuff. I also like the, to put a little bit of green onion on mine. This mushroom sauce is killer. Yeah, I think you should put that on everything. Pretzels, french fries, anything you can get your hands on, put that mushroom sauce on. Chef, this has been a delight. Thanks, what a pleasure it is to be here at Sugar Hill Distillery, Wonder Bar Beer House. Exceptional food, an amazing atmosphere. All the tables are super communal, so you're going to hang out with folks, get to know each other, enjoy each other's company, bring community together just like we should, right? We need to know each other better. So, friends, thanks again for joining us. I'm Anthony Rodriguez. It is my pleasure to be your host. And when I see you all again, we'll be cooking. Thank you, Chef Pollard. We had so much fun at Sugar Hill Distillery. Make sure you stop by soon for some amazing German cuisine and some delicious libations. Thanks again for joining us for the final edition of the Gwinnett Daily Post's Good Taste Gwinnett, powered by Jackson EMC. Special thanks to our presenting sponsor, Jackson EMC, as well as our official grocer, Publix, and Belk Mall of Georgia, our official retailer. Thanks to our supporting sponsors for making this series possible, including Aurora Theater, Fernbank Museum of Natural History, America Recycles Day, the City of Lawrenceville, Gas South District, Gwinnett County, as well as all the wonderful chefs that we've showcased for you tonight. I hope you've enjoyed yourself as much as I have. Just like Gwinnett Daily Post and Aurora Theater, both located at the heart of Gwinnett, another business at the heart of Atlanta is Chick-fil-A, one of our show sponsors. I'd like to invite you to join Chick-fil-A on one of their virtual Chick-fil-A backstage tours. You will connect with the backstage and archive teams as they guide you through a live virtual storytelling experience where you will learn more about the history and culture of this Atlanta icon while being inspired by the life and vision of their founder, S. Truett Cathy. To register for this free tour, go to tours.chickfilA.com. Now let's head around the corner to visit with my personal friend, Chef Julian at Local Republic, located right here on the Lawrenceville Square. Today, we are back in the kitchen of Local Republic with our friend, Chef Julian Bray, and he's going to make an incredible shrimp dish for us today. Chef, tell us a little bit about what you're going to make. Today, we're going to be making gambas al ajil, which served with a baguette that's just uh, garlic shrimp and some chilies. We're gonna be sauteing them up in some olive oil and uh, chili de arbols. You got some beautiful shrimp here. So these are peeled, deveined, with tail off. Um, you need to just pat your shrimp dry with some paper towels. That way, you know, they don't have a lot of moisture on the surface and you'll get a much better sear. A little salt and pepper right on the shrimp. I have my pot heating up right here little Dutch oven. I'm just going to make a quick little compound butter that we're going to put in our broth and also to put on our baguettes. So compound butter is basically softened butter and then you mix in something awesome like you're right. mixing in shallots and garlic. Right? Shallots. I'm going to put some garlic. Yeah. Some. <laughs> and some chopped parsley. You can experiment at home if you want to make a different kind of compound butter. You can put all sorts of things in it. You test drive it, see how it goes, let me know. 
So real quick, I'm gonna set the shrimp aside. Uh, the salt's gonna, you know, help take some of that moisture off of the, the flesh, and we're gonna put our compound butter on our bread. And then after we do this, we'll, we'll grill the bread, I assume. We can grill it, you can cook it in a pan. I'm just gonna put it right in the oven today, okay. broth. About a 350 oven? This is actually 450. You've had that pot heating up for a good bit now, and that's important to have a very hot pan. Very hot pan, especially for something you're cooking really fast, always high heat. Because right, you don't want it to come to temperature, you want it at temperature. Correct, yes. So we're gonna start just with our olive oil. Now we're gonna flavor our oil. So when we cook our shrimp, you know, it has plenty of flavor. We're gonna start with some shallots. Oh. The sizzle is amazing and the smell is fantastic. Some garlic. Yeah, just a little. Just a little. Just a little bit. And then we're gonna take our chili de arbols. Now are these particularly spicy or? These, they're pretty spicy. You don't need a lot. Uh, I'm gonna start with just four. They're a dried pepper, yeah. So I got four chilies. I'm just gonna break them in half and throw them right in. You don't really wanna brown the garlic and shallots. You just wanna cook them until you can really smell it. Oh, I can smell it. <laughs> and now we're good to go in with our shrimp. And this won't take very long at all. They're gonna turn pink and they're gonna be done. Correct. I like the, the cast iron or Dutch oven because it really protects the food that you're cooking. It won't get too hot and burn or and, you know, it keeps all that moisture in. So we're gonna kinda flatten them out to the bottom of the pan. Try to get a nice little sear. And you'll see all that nice browning. We call it fond in the culinary industry. But the, you know, the, the color of the shallots and the garlic and the shrimp all caramelizing on the bottom of the pot. So you wanna look for that nice little pink color coming off the shrimp. You know, get a little bit of sear. That way it'll lock in the moisture. We don't wanna just boil these shrimp. The smell of garlic, shallots, and shrimp is absolutely permeating every bit of this kitchen. Just spectacular, chef, truly. Thank you. But time to deglaze. I got some chicken stock right here, just about a cup and a half. Then we have some sherry, cooking sherry. Nice, and that's gonna give it a very Spanish flavor to it, right? And you called it gambas al ajillo, which is sh shrimp and garlic, right? <laughs> shrimp with garlic, that's really all that is in Spanish. So, But sherry is a, a key ingredient in so many Spanish dishes and really makes it, uh, gives it that sense that it's a Spanish dish. You wanna make sure you really scrape all that caramelization off the bottom of the pan so it you know incorporates in the broth and you get all that nice flavor that you've created. So we're gonna bring this to a simmer. And just so we're clear, this is not a cooking sherry. It's a drinking this sherry. Is a drinking sherry. And it is not cream sherry. No, no, no. Right. The, at the grocery store when you go and buy cooking sherry, they add a lot of sodium to it and yeah, you know, nobody needs more. Nobody needs more. <laughs> So now that uh, our broth is up to a boil, final step, guess what? More compound butter. <laughs> wow. Just Give a it a nice little stir. When that butter dissolves, the shrimp are gonna be ready. And then we can garnish. I hope you're serving this in a bowl with those baguettes so you can use every bit of that bread to soak up all of that goodness. Oh, right. So this is, uh, the butter's all mounted in. It's good, dissolved. The shrimp are cooked. We're just gonna do a little garnish, more parsley, just for some freshness. Give that a little stir. and then just a little bit of uh, some pepper vinegar. This is house made here at Local Republic, but you can find this at a grocery store. And yeah, that little blast of acid, it uh, brightens it up right there at the right. end. You'll remember this. It's like hitting it with lemon juice, but you've hit it with pepper vinegar instead. Right, exactly, yes. And this I would just put right on your table, you know, cover it up, bring to the table. 
serve the bread and take the lid off, you know, it's going to be a, a great surprise for everybody. Friends, Chef Julian has just cooked up for us this amazing gambas al ajillo, shrimp with garlic. We can't wait to taste it. That's my favorite part about this show. I keep coming back to host it. And, of course, all of you at home that I know are enjoying these recipes and cooking them for yourselves. At least I am hoping that you're cooking some of these for yourselves. You're truly going to enjoy it. So stay tuned. We'll come back. We'll taste this together. Today, we are at Local Republic with my friend Chef Julian Brown and we are about to taste his gambas al ajillo, shrimp in garlic sauce with this amazing garlic bread with shallots and parsley. Oh, it looks so incredibly good. So I'm going to uh, get myself a little plate here. And let's see. Shrimp. I wouldn't be shy. I would just dunk your whole piece of bread in there if you're at home doing this. Why, why not? Friends, this is absolutely delicious. The garlic comes through, the shallots come through. It is, it is just a flavor experience. And, and, and just, just enough heat in there to really, really sort of uh, cut through everything else. It's not a lot, it's not super hot or anything like that, but it really does help to define the dish. And the sherry certainly comes through as well. Just a really complete, lovely dish. I mean, this could be this could be a main course if you want. So a great appetizer too. You could serve it that way and just folks could just spoon out what they want on their bread and enjoy it. Absolutely. Chef, thank you so much. I really appreciate coming here to Local Republic. It's here on the square right near the Aurora Theater. So it's nearby for us. Our patrons enjoy being here. I love being here. Every time I'm in here, the service is top notch and everyone is treated like family. The food, absolutely amazing. Friends, Thank you so much. I'm Anthony Rodriguez. It's my pleasure to be your host. When I see you all again, we'll be cooking. All right. Mom, Actually. Dad, I'm a pescatarian now. Okay. So pescatarian. Dude, come on. Get the groceries you need when you need them. Curbside pickup at Publix, powered by Instacart. How'd it go? Spaceman said there'd be ice cream. Oh. Forgot your toothbrush. Ice cream. Got it. That was a spaceman, space man. baby. Woo! Get the groceries you need when you need them. Publix delivered. Powered by Instacart. Chef Julian, thank you so much for that incredible experience. I always love coming to Local Republic right here on the Lawrenceville Square. We have one more thing to take care of this week, and I almost forgot. Tonight we are drawing our final winners. Check out the list below to see if you've won. We'll be contacting all winners after tonight's event via email. Thanks again to our VIP ticket sponsors, including Fernbank Museum of Natural History, Chick-fil-A Backstage Tours, Love and Florist, Live Healthy Gwinnett, Gwinnett Stripers, Holt Camp Heating and Air, Gwinnett Daily Post, and our Good Taste Restaurants, and of course, Publix Aprons Cooking Schools and Jackson EMC. Congratulations to each of you. Remember, you'll be able to view this event as well as previous weeks of Good Taste Gwinnett in its entirety, or you can watch parts of particular interest to you starting tomorrow on GwinnettDailyPost.com and for the next few weeks on GoodTasteGwinnett.com. I'm Anthony Rodriguez from Aurora Theater. 
So please be sure to check out all of our upcoming shows at Aurora Theater and the Lawrenceville Arts Center. Christmas Canteen will be starting November 26th and Night Before Christmas starts on December 4th. Wrap up your holidays with our Trouble in Toyland that's part of our Children's Playhouse series. We've got so much going on, you'll want to catch every single thing at Lawrenceville Arts Center. Thanks again for joining us for this year's Good Taste Gwinnett, powered by Jackson EMC. And until next time, let's keep cooking. Publix Clover Health and Northeast Georgia Health System welcome you to join us for our Gwinnett Health Fair on Saturday, November 6th from 10 a.m. to 1 p.m. at Bogan Park in Buford. Admission is free. There'll be over 40 vendors, free COVID vaccines, free health screenings, blood mobile, door prizes, food drive, and more. Check out GwinnettHealthFairs.com. That's Saturday, November 6th from 10 a.m. to 1 p.m. at Bogan Park in Buford. At Jackson EMC, innovation is an ongoing cycle, a process without a beginning or an end, where one idea leads to the next. Solar power, electric vehicle programs, energy efficient right choice homes, automated switch technology. What we do as an industry is vital. We keep communities powered. So we must always have an eye on the future. Jackson EMC, innovation for today, innovation for tomorrow.